Although the law of quadratic reciprocity only directly tells us about congruence's modular primes, it turns out that we can extend the ideas to other moduli. The first place to look for generalizations is at powers of primes. These are the lists of perfect squares modular powers of 3 and 5. The pattern may not be immediately apparent, but if we write out all the elements of z27 and z25 in rows of 3 and 5 respectively, it becomes quite clear. We've boxed the quadratic residues and grayed out the terms that are not relatively primed to the modulus. The fact that everything lines up this way is a very interesting pattern that holds true in general. Theorem. If p is an odd prime and the GCD of a and p is 1, then the congruence x squared congruent a modulo p to the n has a solution if and only if a on p is equal to 1. First, notice that if the congruence x squared congruent a modulo p to the n has a solution, then we can reduce the equation modulo p to get a solution to x squared congruent a modulo p. Therefore, if a on p is equal to negative 1, then x squared congruent to a modulo p to the n cannot have any solutions. Now suppose that a on p is equal to 1. We will prove the claim by induction on the power of the prime. When n equals 1, the assumption directly tells us that there exists a solution. Assume that x squared congruent to a modulo p to the k has a solution x naught. This means that x naught squared minus a is equal to m times p to the k for some integer m. We will now generate a solution of x squared congruent to a modulo p to the k plus 1. Let x naught prime be the inverse of x naught modulo p. Then x naught times x naught prime is equal to 1 plus rp for some integer r. Given this collection of symbols, we claim that we can write down a solution to the desired congruence. The proof is a direct calculation by showing that this expression is divisible by p to the k plus 1. There is a lot of algebra here, but there's nothing fancy happening. We start off by squaring the first term. Using the relationship above, we can substitute for x naught times x naught prime. We can also rearrange the minus a term and put it next to the x naught squared term to allow us to use the inductive hypothesis and make another substitution. Next, we expand out the middle term in order to get some cancellation. Notice that we can pull out a factor of p to the k plus 1 from the entire expression, which is what we were trying to accomplish. Technically, this calculation doesn't really involve the law of quadratic reciprocity. It's just an example of a calculation that involves quadratic residues. In class, we'll look at some calculations that do directly use the law of quadratic reciprocity. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.